After two trips to thrift stores up in the Midwest, I'm convinced that Midwest thrift stores are 10 times better than thrift stores in Texas. Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Madison and here on YouTube, I share my love and passion for thrifting, fashion, and all things sewing with all of you who tune into my videos. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing a thrift haul from one of my most recent thrift trips to Savers. So if you haven't watched some of my most recent videos talking about kind of the changes going on in my life, I recently moved up to Wisconsin from Texas a big life change after getting married in June and I love thrifting so I have definitely been trying to figure out what are the best thrift stores up here in this area and I always have heard of Savers. Um, within my first couple of weeks moving up to Wisconsin I visited a Savers and let me just tell you the hype is real. Um, I also had to go do some errands this week and I ran across another Savers so I stopped in and once again it was an amazing experience. So that's what I'm gonna be sharing here today is everything that I found at Savers and just some of my things that I typically look for when I go out thrifting, what I love about thrifting and some of the things and projects that I'm planning to make from this thrift haul. I'm actually really disappointed that I didn't pack my camera the other day when I was doing errands because I've been wanting to do a like come thrift with me where I literally take you through the thrift store. You get my real life reactions of things that I find and kind of my thought process behind thrifting when I'm actually at a thrift store. And because these savers in Wisconsin have literally been so great, I wanted to take you all along and kind of show you what I was finding. But Alas, I did not take my camera and I'm also still trying to like kind of figure out the whole filming in public because that's not me. I love to film in the comfort of no one else being around. So since I did not film a come thrifting with me video slash vlog, I thought I would do just a thrift haul here on YouTube and show you all what I found. So when it comes to thrifting, I feel like my mindset towards it has definitely changed. When I went to thrift stores years ago, I used to predominantly be looking for clothes and thrifting clothes, but at this point, my kind of wardrobe is so expansive and I even downsized and got rid of so many things whenever I moved. Um, and because of where we're living now, it's a tiny house and so my closet is literally a fourth of the size of what it used to be. So most of my clothes are in storage. So it's hard to kind of justify buying things that I don't have space for on the everyday or things I would have to store and then I feel like I wouldn't get enough wear and use out of them. So recently it's kind of less about clothes unless it's things that I really need. Like obviously I came from Texas and so like good warm wintry clothes are definitely something that I look for. And as someone who sews, you all know that one of my favorite things to use as fabric for all of my sewing projects is fabric that I actually thrift. So that's gonna be things like sheets, curtains, um, tablecloths, uh, shower curtains, all of those different things are my favorite types of fabric, especially sheets. And one, it's sustainable. Um, you were spending like $5 on a ton of fabric. You don't have to spend tons of money on a fabric store, just all the things. It's one of my favorite things. It's the like Maria from Sound of Music you know, vibe going on, making things from curtains. Anyways, let's dive into this thrift talk because there's some fun things that I found. So first off, let's talk about the two items of clothing that I got, um, which are sweaters. So I definitely have a good amount of sweaters, but I've been wanting to get more into natural fiber sweaters. So cotton, especially wool, because wool is really warm. I'm trying to kind of, when I go thrifting, be more conscientious of the things that I'm picking up and not just pick up things that are cute, but pick up things that are made with natural fibers because those are so much better for our body. Our skin is like our, our largest organ and synthetic fibers actually are not really good for us because our skin is absorbing it. They're also made out of plastics, most of them, and plastics are horrible for us. They're endocrine disruptors, they mess up our hormones, all of the things. Um, so anyways, I've been trying to source things that are made more out of natural fibers. So, sweaters i have been wearing like the same yellow cardigan just every single day for a little bit of warmth over dresses or shirts and i was getting a little bit tired of the yellow plus it's also a synthetic cardigan and so i wanted some type of cardigan that was a different color and that kind of fit my fall style vibes so 
I found this blue one. It's actually not buttoned right now, but it has this really pretty collar. Um, if you follow me on TikTok, whenever I went thrift shopping in Rome, I tried on all of these vintage sweaters that had these collars. I don't remember what these collars are called. Um, they're not pilgrim collars. I can't remember what they're called. But anyways, they're longer collars on sweaters. And I just thought they were really pretty. So when I found this one, I really loved the collar. I also loved the style of the sweater. It kind of had this really fun knit pattern with different types of stripes. It was slightly chunky, but not too oversized, not too small, little tiny pockets. So we got this. It's definitely a very fun kind of vintagey style slash my fall style right now tends to be very like prairie-esque slash Scandinavian fashion and so this definitely fits into that so we got this it's also 100% cotton so loving that the other sweater is actually the one that I'm wearing right now and I'm obsessed with this this shade of pink is like my new favorite shade of pink I've always said that yellow is one of my favorite colors next to pink this specific shade of pink I want to get so many more things in um and so I really loved it, it actually has shoulder pads which I thought was interesting kind of cute I loved the pattern of it and then it had the nice kind of just classic v-neck style and then it's like a little bit oversized and chunky so it looks really cute with jeans really cute with skirts so this is the other sweater that I got and this one's actually 50% or like 45% cotton and then like 55% mohair. So it's a great natural fiber sweater that will also keep you warm in the winter. So I'm really loving it and I feel like this color goes really good with my complexion. So those were the two items of clothing that I got. I was so close to buying a number of other sweaters and a couple of dresses that I found, but I was trying to not go overboard on this thrift trip. So next up is all of the fabric slash sheets that I got. Now, Again, it's something about these Midwest thrift stores. The sheet section and like the fabric that I come across is just so superior to what I found in Texas. And this is probably some of the best fabric slash sheets I've gotten in a really long time. So first up, I'm so excited about this fabric. I'm 100% weird for it. People will think I'm crazy for it. People will think I'm really weird, but we love to dress in a theme. I also love patchwork um, and I love Christmas. So this fabric that I found is literally perfection. Um, it says totally adorable Christmas print kind of patchwork checkered style fabric. There is a good amount of it. I haven't actually measured out, but I feel like there's at least three to four yards in here. It was $5.99. This is going to be a gorgeous Christmas dress and I am so excited. All right, when I tell you that I really wish I would have filmed a come thrifting with me video because the amount of like gasps and like exclamations that I was projecting on this thrifting day were just over the top, especially with this other piece I'm going to show you. When I saw it, I literally gasped and I was like, oh my gosh, like, verbally was saying it in the aisle so if people were passing me they probably thought I was crazy but you're gonna understand why in a moment and again keeping with the whole trend of like patchwork quilts all those things prairie this piece is a gem all right so in the fabric section we found this fabric and again when I tell you like the actual gas that came out of me when I found this oh my gosh it's just so fun someone probably had this and like you turn it into an actual quilt but we're gonna turn this into a dress and so it's going to be like wearing a quilt but it's this fun all these different floral prints um the design is the same in every square but then there's these cute little houses and then it had like the brand written on the side I was gonna see what this is it is VIP print, Craftstone print works. Anyway, little apples and pictures and florals and just all things cute country cottage. It's gonna be amazing. I have no clue what style of dress I'm gonna make with it, but I know we're gonna make a really fun dress and I will probably document the process here or on TikTok. So make sure you're following me on TikTok because that's where I share all of my other sewing videos and sewing projects that I don't have time to film here for YouTube. All right, next up are two sheets that I found. 
my um, interior design style has changed significantly recently just I think knowing that I was going to be moving to the country and like living on a farm slash it just kind of fits my style in a way and kind of just my views and like perspectives on life and values and so my interior design style is definitely very much like Eng English country cottage um so really cute florals checkers all those kinds of things and that even like translates to some of the clothes that I want to make and certain like prints of fabric that fit like this English country cottage vibe so interior design mixed with fashion is very like English country cottage these days um so I found two sheets that fit like the vibe of this like English cottage that I can't wait to make into dresses and I also found some fabric to make some curtains for our house that I'm also very excited about. All right, so two sheets. And again, I'm pretty sure that I like uttered gasps and exclamations as I found these sheets as well because they were just so, so precious and so pretty. So first up is stripes. I've been really into stripes recently. I don't know why, but it's stripes and little like rosebuds. How pretty, it's like different colors of light pink and like minty green, the stripes. I mean, it's kind of giving like Regency Pride and Prejudice vibes, but make it English cottage, like 21st century cuteness. Um, so yeah, I'm really excited about this sheet, turning it into some kind of cute, feminine, girly dress. The other one, I am obsessed with this print. It is the prettiest sheet in the entire world. Um, so it's a creamy color. And then we have all of these gorgeous flowers. Again, it just looks like an herb garden, just English country cottage at its finest. And then the edge of the quill also has this print, which is giving like 1700s Colonial Williamsburg, which I'm such a huge fan of those prints. So I'm very interested to see like what style of dress I end up going with for this. As much as these florals are really like spring fabrics, I kind of just want to make them to wear in the fall um, with like a cute sweater. I think it'd be so fun. Like this as a dress under this pink or with my blue cardigan that I got, like literally perfect. All right, next up is the fabric that I got for curtains. Um, I've been wanting to make like some really short, just like little skirting curtains for our house to kind of give it a little bit more of character, but, and then also still fit into this like English country cottagey vibe. And so I've been trying to figure like what print to go with, but when I saw this fabric, I thought it was so perfect. So I got a ton of this checkered plaid fabric that's kind of a medium weight cotton. So it's gonna be like really great for curtains. I would 100% make a dress in this, but we have to use it for curtains. Um, so recently I've been inspired by, I think her name is Morgan or something on Instagram. Um, she has like the cutest interior design style, the prettiest like English cottage, just personal style. And then she recently started like an interior design home decor brand i'm gonna have to find her and post her on the screen so you can see it but a lot of her bags and pillows are this adorable plaid print and i just love how she pairs it with all of her different interior design decorations and so when i saw this it was definitely giving me that vibe that i have been seeing on her page and wanting to go with so i think this is going to be really cute for curtains if i have extras i really want to make covers for pillows but i don't know if we're gonna have enough um so this is that, and this is like just a piece of fabric. Pretty sure I paid like $7.99 for it. If we would have got this at a fabric store, it would have probably been $7.99 a yard instead of $7.99 for literally like five yards right here. This is why we thrift fabric. It's budget friendly and sustainable. All right, last step kind of fabric sheet wise is a flannel sheet. Um, and let me tell you my thought process behind getting a flannel sheet and what I'm using it for and why. Okay. So again, you're going to think me crazy. I'm like fully embracing my little house on the prairie, like dreams right now. I mean, living in the country, living in the farm, living in Wisconsin, literally the Laura Ingalls Wilder Museum is like 45 minutes away from where I live. I have not gone yet. I'm really, really sad I haven't, but we're going to go in the spring. Anyways, because I love dresses. And I've been wearing them a lot recently because they're comfortable, they're really pretty, they're easy, but it gets a little challenging in the winter because it's cold. So you have to like layer underneath it. And the other day I put on a pair of like sweatpants style fabric shorts under my dress um, for added warmth 
and it was like the perfect layer to wear under dress to like stay warm. And then I started like thinking back to when I read Little House on the Prairie and I remember somewhere along the lines reading the books and when it got to winter time they switched out their undergarments from cotton to flannel because flannel is still a cotton fabric but it's very warm compared to just regular cotton and so I'm sitting there thinking I think I need undergarments made from flannel fabric and by undergarments I literally mean like pantaloons like they wore in the 1800s in Little House on the Prairie because if it's winter time if you're gonna wear leggings under things anyways you might as well make like a cute pair of pants to wear under your clothes to keep you warm um so we might be embracing that <laughs> they're probably not going to be like uh pantaloons that show under my dress but they would still be pantaloons that are there and so i want flannel for that and so i got this sheet it is a very like worn sheet but i just thought it was like kind of cozy and i wanted to go with kind of a striped print i also got this one because it was only 5.99 there were other ones i was looking at that were like 7.99 but i was trying to stay a little bit more within budget anyways we got this green and brown striped flannel sheet so we're gonna try our hand at making like pantaloons ish from this or maybe like longer boxer type shorts and that's our warm layer for the winter so there's that. All right, last up are non-clothing, non-fabric related items. I have a couple books and a couple of other things. I used to thrift so, so many books. Um, I have like over 300 books. I have a very expansive library and most of them have come from just perusing the books at thrift stores and buying thrifted books. Um, it's a great budget friendly way to buy amazing books. And I also love collecting like antique, vintage books over topics that I'm interested in or books that are just really pretty or really old um so yeah these two books kind of fit that whole theme so first up I got this book that's called how to write for homemakers and I thought that was really interesting because it is printed around the time where home economics was um really coming into play and really becoming a thing if you don't didn't know this i was a family consumer science teacher for five years family consumer science is the new rebranded name for home economics and so anything having to do with the history of home economics and or women embracing home economics and using it for jobs in different forms is always very intriguing to me and that's kind of in a way what i do now even though i'm not a teacher anymore i still share my love for sewing online partly because it's my passion and just my hobby in general but it's also rooted in what I went to college for and what I taught for five years so anyways I thought this was very interesting the cover is just really cool and because so much of what I do is teaching other people about like life and home-ish skills I thought that this would just be kind of very interesting to peruse um and like the different things they recommend they're talking about like if you want to make book booklets bulletins leaflets uh, copy editing letters memos cookbooks home economic texts um, educational films and slides and i do a lot of that i'm actually in the process of turning all of my classroom lessons for my fashion design classes into actually actual lessons that teachers can purchase and use in their own fashion design classrooms and i post those on teachers pay teachers so if you're a teacher and you teach fashion design go check out my teachers pay teachers under the name fashion files by madison lynn anyway so i do all of those things um on the side and so i just thought this was really interesting next up i am in the process of just like brainstorming planning out a spring garden and one of those things is wanting to have an herb garden where i can grow a lot of different herbs for cooking making teas and for medicines and so i found this book called culinary herbs for short season gardeners and in wisconsin we are definitely in a very short season because winter is so long and the ground is frozen for so long so i thought this would be interesting to just become more versed on herbs you can grow for cooking how to do that their uses all those things all right next up is two things that i just had to get because they were so so cute um but also i saw like a tiktok a while ago of this girl who was thrifting clothes for her future kids and i thought it was the cutest thing ever because i always see such cute kid clothes um and i've always told myself that when i have kids one day 
I'm probably gonna be like thrifting less for myself and predominantly just like thrifting clothes for my kids all the time because I think that's just so fun. So at the Savers that I was at, they had a rack that was kind of like all vintage clothes, which I thought was super interesting. And they had some really good pieces and two pieces were two vintage little girl dresses. And when I tell you that I also <laughs> was just like, oh, these are so cute, like in the store, speaking aloud when I found these. And then I decided just how to get them because they were so cute and it's just fun to put it aside and store it for my future kids one day. Okay, so first up is this adorable vintage polka dot little girl's dress. It is the cutest thing you have ever seen. It's also cotton. And so many clothes of kids are made with synthetic fabrics. Anyways, it's kind of like a sailorish style. It has a sailor collar. Like how precious is that? I mean, my kids one day are just gonna have amazing fashion sense because everything's gonna be thrifted. And this is only $3.99 for a vintage little girl's dress. So cute. The other one is also a vintage girl's dress. And I love this one because it has a cute little Peter Pan collar and it's checkered and it has the most beautiful smocking. Smocking is such an underrated like clothing detail and I want to learn how to do smocking because it's just so beautiful and so classic. But how precious is this? I mean, look at the smocking details, the cute little collar. So cute. So yeah, I don't have kids yet, um, but hopefully in a couple of years and I am just gonna put these aside for them and I'm really excited about it. All right, so that is a wrap on my thrift haul from exploring local Midwest thrift stores. I am definitely gonna have to work on doing a come thrifting video in the near future whenever I head to the thrift store again or realize that I need something. So stay tuned for that. I wanted to be sharing more about thrifting and I've also been brainstorming the idea of creating an ebook that is kind of everything behind how to be a smart thrifter, how to start thrifting for yourself, how to thrift your own wardrobe, why thrifting is so great, tips and tricks, all those things. So if you'd be interested in a thrifting kind of ebook that literally walks you through everything, all the different resources for thrifting both online and in person just all the things whether you have been thrifting for a while or you want to start thrifting and you just don't know where to start because it seems overwhelming that's just an idea i've been playing around with so thank you all for watching this video hope that you enjoyed it and maybe this inspired you to go check out your local thrift store especially if you are a sewer and see what kind of fabrics you can come across and just what other treasures are at your thrift store don't forget to leave a thumbs up on this video, drop a comment, tell me what your favorite thing was in this video or what your favorite thing is that you have thrifted or maybe like what local thrift stores you have and love to visit. Thanks for watching today and I will see you in the next video. Bye.